Hey, wait a minute. Bug, it's Goblin spelled backwards! So yesterday, Halloween morning, Toby Fox, the maker of Undertale, dropped a survey onto the internet. Just a survey that will ask you questions about things. And this is the result of the survey. It turns out that Toby Fox, being a wacky bastard, decided to throw out a game for free without telling anyone he was going to do it. It was just there. And this is Deltarune, the sequel something else quill? Let's just call it the quill. This is the quill to Undertale. And it's very good. It's a couple hours. It's not very long, you know, much shorter than Undertale. But it's free. And it's great. It's really good. Now, whether this is just a taste of something larger remains to be seen. We don't know if this is the lead up to something purchasable, if anything else that's coming will be free or not. Um, I've got ideas. Everyone's got ideas. Uh, and I'm not going to discuss too much about it uh, for the time being. Uh, I know people might be worried about spoilers. They may not have got a chance to play it yet. Certainly when it was first announced, the site understandably crashed, the site where you could get it from, because, well, lots and lots of people went there. I don't know if you know this, but uh, Undertale is quite popular. So people were keen to see what Fox has next. Up Fox's Foxy Sleeve. Now, as I say, I'm not going to give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away now. Uh, I might talk a little bit at the very end, but I'll do warnings and that if I do decide to... Uh, do a little bit of speculation regarding what happens throughout. I beat it yesterday, um, just started playing, didn't stop till it was done. So this is the combat system, you know, we'll talk about the mechanics. Very similar in many ways to Undertale, of course. Uh, you've got a, a character with a soul, and you control the soul, use that in, you know, quasi-bullet hell style fashion to avoid the bullets that the monsters fling at you, uh, except, as you can see, we have a party. We've got a party-based system now, which makes things just a little bit more complex. Not in a bad way, you know, it's just more intricate, more things to do. So, even though you mostly control the main character, who has an, uh, a name up front now, Chris, uh, you can tell the other character what to do. Now, they can act independently. Um, as we see with Ralsei here, Ralsei doesn't have an act command, but you can use Chris's act command. I don't know why I had this big uh, delay there, just act command. But anyway, you can use Chris's act command to tell Ralsei to act, and you can act in conjunction with uh, your other party members and whatnot. Hang on, I need some water. I did this the first thing in the morning, so my throat's all dry from waking up, so I've got my lovely water here, because um, I was a very good boy, and um, I didn't, not because Toby Fox told people to not talk about the game for 24 hours, but I felt in my deep heart of hearts that I should uh, give people some time to enjoy the game themselves, and sort of see the surprises. And I'm sure everybody on the internet felt the same and nobody live streamed it immediately or anything like that. If EA told me not to talk about something for 24 hours, I wouldn't do it. I think I once got a copy of a, a Call of Duty or some Activision game early, but I didn't get it through them. So I just saw the embargo and said, fuck it. They didn't send it to me, I'm under no obligation, I got this through other means, so fuck it. Anyway, um, where are we? Right, so here's some dialogue that you can maybe get a, a post-it note and stick it up on the screen to hide if for some reason you've not played this and are watching this and don't want to know anything about this. That would be a weird situation, but it may be a situation you find yourself in. And this is, I want to say, from the midpoint of the game. I don't know, I'm terrible with timing. Um, I, I tried to use a bit not too late into the game, so you don't see much of what's going on. But as is expected of a follow-up to Undertale, you can't really show any of it without giving something away, can you? Anyway, you got plenty of the battle system in this section, so that's nice. Um, speaking of... See the lovely battle music? We can't see it, you can hear it. Hear the lovely battle music. The soundtrack 
is characteristically wonderful. Uh, lovely little tunes, some really uh, driving, uh, uh, inspiring ones for some of the battles, things that really pump up the jam, the bespoke jam. I'm not very good at avoiding things, even if they're big blocks, because I'm terrible at video games. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Um, so yeah, lots of uh, clever ways the combat system's being played with in just this, sh uh, just this little bit of footage I've got, let alone the rest of the game. Uh, this particular enemy, it's uh, the Bloxer. Uh, it starts off all jumbled, and then it's a timing puzzle. I say puzzle, it's like a timing challenge where you've got to uh, hit the right button as the right body part is highlighted to build the robot in the right way. Um, there is, I think there's some footage of it, uh, an enemy that you blow on to blow all of the uh, stuff that's off them that are covered in fluff and what. Mm. Covered in fluff and whatnot, and you blow that away by tapping a button. So it's more involved. That's a good word to describe it. It's a bit more involved than a combat system that already was fairly more involved than the average combat system. I like this character. The rebel, such is the way of the worm. I don't know why I like that line, but yeah, just a rebellious worm. Uh, plenty of NPCs, all individually designed, all of them weird looking. Some of them in twisted forms that if uh, this were a more realistic game, you'd feel kind of sick watching them. Uh, I got stuck on that corner there, that fucked me up. Uh, there were quite a few moments like this. Um, similar to the Undyne chase sequence in, um, in Undertale, where you're capable of taking damage in real time. There are quite a few RPGs that, where you can take damage outside of combat by messing something up. But there's something of a focus in Deltarune here. Uh, the screen goes a bit dark so you can see your soul, which is something Undertale didn't do, and you've got to get through it. So quite a few more uh, environmental challenges. Uh, this is the antagonist of the majority of the game, Lancer. Uh, and again, lovely bit of music to uh, introduce each character, give us a feel of what they're like. And Lancer is part of a set of enemies that have a deck of cards uh, aesthetic. Uh, and yeah, I, 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 it's good. Sorry, um, it's hard to dis it's, it's one of these games that's really hard to talk about without going into detail, but you don't want to go into detail because you don't want to give everything away. Uh, but it is a funny game. That's another thing that needs to be pointed out. Toby Fox is a witty little fucker. Um, sometimes, I said in Undertale, sometimes the jokes go on a bit too long. Not consistently and not in an altogether terrible way, but there were one or two sections where I was like, okay, I get the joke here, don't need to see it again. Um, and I said words to that effect in my review. Very glowing review, one of the most positive I've ever written. But that was the line Toby Fox used on the Steam page. So, you know, well done to him there. I'd have done the same thing. I'm the kind of person that could read a novel written about me of glowing praise. And if there's one sentence that says something like, you know, well, his, his tits are a bit fat. And I'd be like, ah, oh, they think I'm nothing but a pair of fat tits. Um, I can't get over the look on the duck's face, if I'm honest. Um, again, this is just an example of some of the more involved things you can do. It doesn't have much bearing on the game, of course. Um, which seems to be a bit of a theme in this. Um, player agency and decisions that matter. Uh, I don't know if that's a... You know, a, a, an intricate theme that has been woven into it the same way things like uh, you know player exhaustiveness was woven into Undertale I'm not here to pretentiously waffle on about the themes uh, not that I couldn't waffle on pretentiously about the themes I'm just saying I'm not here to do that here uh, that's something for me to think about writing but then never get round to writing that's that's how I do things. I have deep, meaningful thoughts and feelings about video games. But then I think, oh, I'll have to sit down and write that. So I don't. And I just record myself messing around with fake pumpkins like I did yesterday uh, in a video that went up and had nothing to do with Deltarune because I never uploaded anything to do with Deltarune uh, at any other time but this. 
you know, I didn't post things up 24 hours uh, and, and upset some people. Um, and I certainly didn't screen tear it. This is a fun little bit as well. So again, just it's more puzzle heavy, I felt. In Undertale, a lot of the puzzles were um, throwaway. There was some puzzle solving, but a lot of them existed just for a joke. Whereas here, uh, there are quite a few more puzzles and quite a few more um, seriously presented ones. Uh, they're, they're not undermined for a goof. They're there to actually puzzle you, uh, shall we say. Uh, so yeah, Deltarune is free. I can't believe... Well, I keep saying I can't believe it was given away for free, but then I remember it's Toby Fox. If anyone was going to give away a very significant follow-up to a very successful game, if anyone was going to just give that away, it would be Toby Fox, the Wacky Bastard. That's Toby Fox's full name, is Toby Fox the Wacky Bastard, or as the cool kids call them. So... Uh, I guess we can wrap up now. Uh, this will lead on. I captured like 20 minutes of footage, but you don't need 20 minutes of footage. That really will give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. But suffice to say, it's one of the funnest little games I've played this year. Uh, hardly surprising, considering how much uh, I have gushed about my love for Undertale before, and the fact that this is more Undertale-themed content. And just the fact that it's free, I mean, the fact it's very short might preclude it from, say, you know, year-end honours at a lot of places. Um, many may see it as just a demo or something like that. But no, this is a this is a game, a significant game. Um, significant in terms of, you know, it having meaty content and everything, although I personally would think it's significant. Um, uh, see? I'd have solved this puzzle. I say puzzle, this isn't so much a puzzle. Um, I'd have solved that instantly if I'd have... Uh, well, I'm going to try. I'm gonna play for time until we get to the, the fluffy... F the fight against the fluffy monster, because they're quite fun to fight. Um, and that's something that, that I'm impressed with with this. Is they could have just done more of the same. They really could have. They could have... Um, oh, this is it. The Rabbix. Look at those drooly boys. Uh, they could have just done more Undertale. And I don't think a soft and clean boy. I don't think anyone would have judged that too harshly. I think people would have been happy enough with that. But instead, we got a party system. We got a TP system, which doesn't, to my knowledge, stand for toilet paper. Uh, where you build up a magic meter by defending or moving the soul. If you move the soul, the heart icon near, I forgot which way uh, Lancer went then. If you move the heart icon near to uh, where the enemy projectiles are, but don't get hit, of course, you can build up TP, and that can be used... It's basically MP. It's used to spend on spells. So uh, you've got a heal spell, a pacify spell. Uh, that's an interesting one. You can do certain actions that won't just make uh, enemies sparable. You will also make them tired, and if they're tired, you can get rid of them with uh, the pacify spell. Uh, and Susie here, uh, Susie will have... Uh, he's with the party here and there and will have various abilities. Susie's hot-headed and attacks, and uh, there are certain sequences where you can warn enemies about incoming attacks to stop them being hit by, you know, enemies that you might not, uh, by party members rather, that you might not necessarily have direct control of at, at that time. So you get just lots of intricate little details, uh, lots of familiar stuff as well. It's not so unfamiliar um, as to be alien or foreign at all. But yeah, I'm, ju I'm super impressed. This is, this is a developer who could rest on their laurels now. Undertale made bank. It's on all the systems now. People love it, adore it. This is the moment where anyone could easily have sold out. Anyone could easily have just done more of the same. Or just did more Undertale updates and not bothered much at all. But no. This was well-crafted, deeply crafted. Um, certainly not throwaway. Has very important implications. And it's free. In a world where, you know, so many 
<laughs> where so many companies try and give you less content now for more money than ever. It's always refreshing to, and it, you know, I know it's that's easier to do on the indie level, but it still is refreshing to just see here is a game. I made this. It's a surprise to you. Have it. And that's that. So I'll conclude there for people who don't want to see anything else. And if you've already seen it or, you know, if you've already played it or you don't care. Which, again, if you don't care, I mean, well done getting this far. But um, I'll do a little bit of thoughts on the end and everything. Now, so I'll count down, then you can fuck off. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, so, after this game concludes, Chris gets out of bed and starts to be a little bit Kara-ish. I'm still erring on the side of not giving much away, but it's a very stark and dark ending. It's very, oh, holy shit, uh, that got real. Uh, and it also says that it will, I mean, basically, when you just before the last sequence it tells you the chapter's concluding and then after you get the last rather haunting sequence uh, it, the credits roll and that's that and it tells you we'll see more in chapter 2 so is this an episodic game is it episodic um, and it will those episodes be given for free we don't know that so much unless unless something got said overnight and I said, I did this the first thing, I, this is my first job waking up today. Um, so maybe, maybe it turns out that episode two could be up already. Who knows? I don't think it is. But, you know, I don't know what the details are. But it does seem like it's going to be potentially episodic. Then again, this may still just be an incredibly long demo. Or like a, or at least a, a free teaser for a more substantial game. If it is that, if, it, if this is on the demo level, that's a hell of a bloody thing, isn't it? Um, but who knows? This could just be a, an, an intro, a prologue, a free prologue to a paid game. This could be a first free episode to an episodic game. Uh, it, all of the episodes could be free if it's episodic. Or it could just be its own thing and we never see a chapter two. <laughs> who knows? Uh, and there are questions about the story. Um... Is it a sequel? Is it a prequel? Uh, there are things within the game that seem to support various things. Like, there is a graveyard where it could be suggested. I mean, there's certainly some stuff in there that says, like, we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, the aftermath of Undertale. But there are one or two interactions that keep making me wonder if that's the case. Um... So I'm just going to hedge my bets and not go on either side there. Uh, but the timing of like the, where this takes place, or even if it takes place in the same universe rather than a parallel or something, um, to me at least is up in the air. It might be more obvious to other people, but to me there are little hints here and there that things might not be a straightforward sequel. But we will see. That, of course, yeah, remains to be seen. And I will stop there. Um, I only offered vague speculation with no conclusion, but that's the best way to talk about video games, I find. So that's it. That's Delta Rune. What an exciting time! And uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm impressed. This is a fucking well, regardless of anything else, this is a friggin' bloody great game in and of its own right. Marvelous. It's a marvelous little delight. And that's Delta. Look at his little face. 